Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Worlds 2020 here at Lowell Park as we have our second last game of the evening. I'm Atlas, this is LS, and this game doesn't really mean a whole lot when it comes to the standings. Um, however, both of these teams not wanting to uh, go out without a bit of a bang. And uh, both of these teams also needing to prove a lot uh, to their home regions. I know that LGD was certainly copying it uh, back yeah. in China and uh, TSM as well as, uh, you know, the first seed out of North America definitely had a lot more expectations on their shoulders than a fourth place finish in this group. So looking forward to seeing whether, you know, some uh, respect is going to be gained back from either of these two teams. Yep. As uh, we do get into the draft for this particular game, I want to cast your minds back to uh, a very long time ago where a gentleman called Shie made his debut on uh, Team WE. That was in IEM Katowice, where somehow the ninth place team that was WE at the time from the LPL managed to get to the grand final. <laughs> and that grand final was against Bjergsen's TSM. He had a lot of very different players around him at that particular time. And at that particular point, TSM 3 0 them pretty considerably easily. So looking forward to seeing what this uh, second rematch between these two squads is going to show for us. As uh, we do already have the bands coming through, Caitlyn, the Syndra and the Orn all banned away by LGD. And TSM taking away a couple of the power picks here in uh, Shie's Twist of Fate, which has always been very good. And uh, the must ban Lucian, that should never get through a draft. And well, Caitlyn, Syndra, Orn by LGD is a bit interesting, given that they are on blue side. Renekton, we did just finally see it lose. And it was taken away. So I'm curious what LGD are actually going to go for. Also, given the nature of the match, are we going to see anything a little bit more for fun? Yeah. Um, Camille wouldn't necessarily be a for fun pick. Neither would the Oriana, which is going to be locked away. So LGD looking like business at this particular point in time. As uh, we'll see what TSM have in mind. Nidalee's still available. Definitely going to be a priority pick for both of these teams. The jungle is feeling pretty wide open at this point in time. So, you know, Graves there is a response. Lilia also available. Last time these two teams met, it was uh, the Longxing and Peanut Show when it comes to uh, that particular game. And it was, in fact, the Lilia that was uh, what Peanut was piloting. As there's the Zillion lock-in. Speaker thinking about an Amumu. As uh, that might be a shout out to our friend Cloud Templar, who is currently uh, commentating the Korean broadcast of the World Championships as we speak. I spoke to him backstage and I was like, are you worried about Gen G? And he's like, no, I'm worried about LCS. <laughs> as uh, Graves going to be the lock in here. So it doesn't look like for fun is really happening, but TSM wanting to go out uh, with their play style intact. And of course, Bjergsen, a uh, pretty standout. Uh, Zillion player, even if it didn't necessarily work out against Genji in their first outing. As Peanuts in Italy, likely to be picked up. That will be locked away as we're looking for an 80 top laner. Could, of course, just be a Camille, theoretically, out of Longxing right here. Or they could take away a priority 80 carry or support or something like that. And it is going to be Mark's Pantheon locked away here for LGD. And I feel like the LGD draft right now with Nidalee and Oriana. Now, the Oriana is going up against Zillion, so she should be able to actually get control over the early stages of the laning phase. And so we'll see what Peanut's going to be able to do with that kind of freedom. Pantheon likely is going to be in the support role. Probably not going to see any sort of flex shenanigans. Now Camille is being locked in for TSM. And so the bot laners Still a little bit unknown. I'm curious where they're going to end up going. Curious about what the bans are that LGD are going to throw out at them as well as there's the Jax ban away from Longxing. Not going to want to see any of those Jax into Camille matchups that we've seen be pretty Jax favored actually uh, in the couple of matches that we have seen. Although nameplates do certainly play a part in that one. Tom Kench going to be taken off the board here as LGD do target Biofrost just a little bit. Senna still available, could likely be somewhere that TSM want to go. Senna has been very, very strong despite her loss in the previous game as Electric Bear hits the bench. Not going to be seeing him out of Longxing. And, well, let's see what the final ban is going to be here. It's going to be the Leona. Okay, Mark's like, I've locked in my champion and my opponent is not allowed to play any of theirs. 
Could make some sense. Could see uh, Double Lift just take away the center here, but the Ash is also available. Looks like that is going to be the route that they're looking to take. It's now Kramer. What is he going to be playing? As I think might just be the center. I think that they, they take the Ash because it's a vacuum answer to the most common remaining marksman down in the bot lane, both the Senna and the Jin. But and Aurelia, as it turns out, is being hovered right now. Oh, now moving over to Jace. Now Shen. Okay, Shen gonna right. be locked in towards the top side. That is going to be Longxing's answer to this Camille. Tarek isn't even bad here. I know that's a very uncommon support uncommon that we don't pairing. see a lot. Yeah. Thresh though is another answer to the the Pantheon. Play can be very strong. Uh, when he's trying to get in there with his stun, especially if it's used onto his lane partner. So don't mind it, but it is going to be the Frel Yordian bottom lane instead as Ash Braum to be locked away by TSM. And uh, we've got double shields on the bottom side of the map. We'll see who's going to be able to keep their teammates alive the best. As oh. these are going to be your compositions. LS, how are you feeling? about both LGD and TSM coming out of this one. Oh, yeah, I think it's it's no doubt in anyone's mind that TSM has a lot more scaling than LGD. My big worry is that TSM is their own greatest enemy in a <laughs> lot of cases. And there definitely is a lot of explosiveness that can happen on the bottom side of the map that I think would offset the top side scaling. So things get a little bit scary. I don't feel that confident that TSM is going to manage to juggle the level six. Could certainly be dangerous. Also, LGD with the access to the double man drop, if uh, Stand United is going to be used with the Grand Skyfall, means that they will have a lot of global flexibility with those two champions. Looking forward to seeing whether LGD can get things done in the earlier stages, because it was a very disappointing performance that they put up last time around. Now wanting to try and bounce back. However, the North American faithful will be behind TSM, who certainly uh, don't want to be heading home uh, with the record sitting as it is right now. An extra victory would certainly help as far as uh, keeping their eyes on the prize moving into 2021. You could imagine that both of these teams not necessarily in the greatest spirit. So I think that psychologically, a lot's going to be going on in this particular game between these two, and it's who's able to keep their heads in it rather than letting results get to them. So we're doing these final checks to try and get into our fifth game of the day. Of course, groups haven't been sorted just yet. Still waiting to see whether it's going to be Fnatic or Gen G that are going to come out in yeah. that first place. But uh, at the moment, it's looking a little bit like Fnatic. Now, we do have third and fourth confirmed. Yes, third and, LGD and TSM. Third and fourth are indeed confirmed. Now, the important thing here for TSM is that they don't go winless. That is basically what they are trying to fight back against right now. Yeah. And so that there is that on the line. As far as North America is concerned now, it all does come down to FlyQuest in Group D. Yep. To try to get out. We're going to need as many trees planted as possible. Uh, moving into our next group, a group that will be very, very difficult uh, for North America, com considering the other combatants. Uh, top esports have looked absolutely dominant. Uh, even though a lot of people are talking about Darmon, I think that uh, at least equally as dangerous is a team like Top. Derek's going to be in there as well. But let's focus back onto this match as uh, we already have 40 seconds elapsed as we hop into it. Some backs to come down. Checking the summoner spells to see whether anything has actually occurred. And the answer is no. So we do have a bit of a ward on the enemy Brambleback put down by Long Xing. The Surgeon Shen, going back to it, some old favorites there when it comes to Shen skins. One of my personal favorites as well. The way that you used to be able to just throw scalpels at people when it was old Shen, just, uh, just felt right to me. True. I liked it did feel a lot better. TSM now, they're going to start off with clearing the vision inside of their own jungle. Bjergsen does get the ward, so he's already at 1 CS. Amazing. There we go. Or the lane already started. Now, he also does hit level 2 now off the first wave. Ooh, true. So that is pretty nice. GA, understanding that Zillion has a really hard time farming underneath the turret, so I think he's going to try to just shove in really fast while the minions are at different layered HP values. 
and make things really hard. Yep, picks up that bomb as well just to deny its damage onto the minion wave and allow his shove to continue as Longxing. There's out some empowered autos onto Broken Blade. See, they're just sort of uh, testing the waters here in this lane for the time being. Broken Blade probably happy to not have to deal with uh, Longxing's protection yet again. Last time around, it certainly wasn't an easy lane, and you can see right now things going much better for the TSM top laner. Yeah, Broken Blade definitely has control over this lane so far. And Longxing now finally going to ding level 2 himself. Peanut, meanwhile, down here, clearing the wolf camp. Not going to use any of the patience on it, which is a, a little bit surprising. It's one of the mini games that I know China is very critical of. Oh, yeah. Like Ning's clear speed inside of the jungle. Mm -hmm. So Peanut, with almost a full, uh, full patience clear on the wolves right there. That's a virtue, is uh, what I've heard said. So I don't mind it whatsoever. Hawkshot flies through, just uh, trying to scout out Peanut, and he will be spotted. Great aim out of double lift there. Not going to deter Peanut for the minute, as uh, Bjergsen down to about 100, actually, as the Clockwork windup is working. The flash forward, and there it is! First blood for Shea's solo kill in the mid lane at three minutes. And that is a very big solo kill. So many minions in front of the turret. Now, Bjergsen is going to TP back, but now the wave is going to bounce back in. He has more than enough time. She is going to be able to just come off the reset now with such an item advantage. It's going to be really hard now for Zillion to play. Well, Longsheng getting shoved in here towards the top side. You can see Spica is in the area to try and uh, put some pressure in. Looking for a potential dive, maybe. But uh, it is difficult to lock down a Shen without uh, something catastrophic going on. That taunt can be a big problem. Yeah, it's not even just the turret that's the problem here for Spica. It's also that Shen's W is so effective against yeah, Graves. Right. Oh! Good hookshot time. Really yeah, close call, play. yeah. That's uh, something that you certainly have to be wary of, and he absolutely played that well. And uh, now the back going to come through from Longxing. So far, early game advantage for LGD is Xie, continuing to put pressure onto Bjergsen. See that health bar really not very high for Bjergsen yeah. at the moment. He's getting a lot of pressure on him. Landing the bombs, but Command Protect and uh, the orb circulating Shea is certainly going to help out. That extra armor and MR is actually a big deal in the early game Yeah. Uh, for the Ariana. Try not to leave your, your ball in the lane uh, when you're taking damage, guys. That's the PSA. As Peanut, he's going to hop out. Speaker making his way around. Ooh, the cannon. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, this is so much pressure. Shea. Almost dirty farming between mid lane turrets. That's not something I thought was possible. And I, of course, this is a difficult lane for the Zillion. It, but yes. After that solo kill, it is almost impossible. And I think this is one of the, the highlights, actually, of Worlds is when Bjergsen has picked a Zillion, unlike in North America, where he was winning lanes or almost going even in, in hard counter matchups. On the world stage, Oriana is getting the better end of him. Hold on. Yeah, this is yeah, looking a little always. bit better. Shockwave yeah. comes through. The flash into it there as the exhaust comes down. The bomb is going to go on top of Shie, and it is going to explode. But Shie takes a while to die, and Speaker is going to be the one that picks up the kill. So, one to one now in the earlier stages, and that is going to close the gold gap. Ooh. Regardless of how small it is. A little bit of a freeze up here by Broken Blade. I thought I felt a little bit chilly. <laughs> He's going to try good. and hold this wave for Shie the best he can. Has himself the uh, the shield, but Speaker comes down. End of the line might just be that, but no, Mark is going to survive for the minute. Tried to hold as much as he possible. Oh, he's going to be able to give it over. Wow, that's actually yeah. really important. The experience being the biggest part, but also being able to get the gold for it as well. Shie doesn't actually lose as much as he possibly could have. As Longxing in there, Spirit's Refuge actually to deny any sort of answer from Broken Blade, and that's going to win a trade for the LGD top lane. A flash forward, that's going to be the stun speaker, nailed by the spear, and Peanut going to help the support lock down the kill. Sometimes when you see supports getting kills, you feel bad, but when it's Pantheon, you don't feel as bad. And also now they're able to exert a little bit of pressure onto Broken Blade in the top lane, who had been doing such a good job on his own accord. In this Camille versus Shen matchup. And so 
currently as the game does stand, there's a small gold advantage for LGD. The bot lane, we haven't really been getting too many glimpses of it, and as I say that, we do finally pan down here. Kramer, a little ahead in the CS department, but it's definitely not the end of the world. I mean, Kramer hasn't had a lane partner for the last two and a half minutes, so yeah. you'd probably say having a uh, slight CS advantage is not what you would expect from the LGD 80 carry. Mark is finally going to turn back up here towards the bottom lane as the Dancing Grenade looks to try and even out the lane state. Volley's even being, uh, being avoided. This captive audience comes through to try and get a bit of extra damage down. Not going to be able to do anything there as the minions were the ones that propped it. There's now TSM slink off into the river and look for this first Cloud Drake of the game at seven and a half minutes. Looks like they should be able to get, grab this uncontested. And LGD right now are aware of this, but yeah, there's no way they're going to be able to move over here. Ooh, oh! Arrow connects, great shield timing, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Mark is going to go down by Frost. Grabbing that kill, they get the flash out of Kramer as well. That's going to be the lockdown. Ooh. Spear almost connects and the curtains have been called. Scoping out by Frost, who I don't believe had the unbreakable, and now just going to hold it for the minute. I do like the music, so I like it when uh, yeah. our gym players do hold onto the curtain call. It was really important that they get the kill at the time that they did, and Shen did not end up appearing down in bottom. And so I feel like TSM, they've really weathered the storm so far. Longxing looking for a little bit more of a battle here towards the top side. Guessed wrong uh, for when Broken Blade was going to be answering back. Of course, precision, precision protocol is uh, a little bit more difficult when there's a Spirit's Refuge, and the minigame in this matchup is uh, timing both of those abilities. And everything that's happening right now, four minutes until the next Ocean Dragon, that's not another high priority dragon necessarily that either team wants to go out of their way to get. And so we'll see what the map state ends up looking like as we do near that LGD. They are still ahead by about a thousand gold. Now remember, TSM, it's assumed that they should be down in the gold apartment. It's it's the way that the lanes are supposed to basically be going. They're supposed to be bleeding. Some CS, some EXP, likely some turret plates. So the gold score is not totally indicative of what's really happening in the game. TSM are really in a pretty fine spot, all things considered. Yep, it's not the end of the world. However, LGD, if they continue on their current course, it's certainly looking good for them as the game goes on. And I'm glad you bring that up because, of course, scaling is something that can make the gold at the top of the screen feel a little bit misleading and is, of course, the case here. Bjergsen hasn't been pushed out of too much CS. I believe even uh, BDD's set caused more of a CS discrepancy than uh, Shie's Orianna has in this particular game. So not absolutely terrible. And that uh, TSM versus Gen.G game was pretty competitive, to be perfectly honest. Spire Frost down here, just clearing out vision where he can. Double if taking care of the minion wave. TSM have somewhat stabilized. It's Peanuts making another pass through his jungle, probably heading towards his Grump next to make sure he's taken as many of the camps as possible. And Kramer has been zoned entirely away from this outer turret. Not a whole lot. Able to really go on unless LGD consent to it. Kramer coming in. Does land that deadly flourish. Yeah, exactly. Stun comes down onto Biofrost, but that is a uh, pretty good unbreakable. The shields are going to come down. Arrow connects there from Double Lift. It's collateral damage and a bomb onto Mark. Flash oh. forward and Double Lift grabs the kill with a volley. He did the calculation and got there in the end. Single oh. man shockwave, but that is going to net them a kill. Peanut grabs that one, and now Double Lift is going to be taken down as well. Shie. Going to get rewarded in the end. Ooh. Some extra experience going over to yeah. the speaker, but that is just uh, on the way out. As Peanut spots out the Graves, collects himself a bomb as well, and LGD continue with pressure it, after that. The unfortunate thing about double the flashing forward for the kill, yes, they get a kill and an assist, but obviously comes at the cost of his flash, which he's not going to have now for the dragon fight, if that even takes place. They immediately die shortly thereafter, and now Doublelift misses out on all of these waves yeah. of EXP. So it's not just the kill gold that ends up being lost out on. Harold goes out into mid lane, does a ton of damage to it. Zillion's tier one turret being almost gone before plates have even really dissipated is not a good sign for TSM. It's going to be very difficult to stabilize the mid part of the game because you would assume that that tier one turret would 
still be up in a Control Mage versus Control Mage matchup. Definitely should be. And uh, the matchup is a lot more important in this particular game. The Zillion can certainly decide a lot as this game goes on. Bone lands here towards the top side. It's Broken Blade, slightly caught out of position. Looks for the stun, doesn't quite get it there onto Longsheng. However, it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, looking to try and get trades where he can. Both of these top laners not feeling under too much threat at this particular point in time. As this one continues. Bottom side of the map, Storm Razor completed by Kramer. 107 to 109 as Doublelift has brought back the CS. And uh, only 002 here for Kramer so far. So a bit of a quiet game for him. And a turret plate going over to Doublelift is certainly good news for TSM. Sheer clearing out the mid lane and uh, they're not going to look for any extra pressure. So the game's certainly slowing down. Yeah, the game here. is absolutely slowing down quite a bit right now. LGD, they are up about 2,000 gold. And when you look at the levels across the board, they're up one in top lane, one in mid lane. And I'm not really quite sure exactly how close both the junglers are, but do remember that Bjergsen has given over some EXP to speak of. So... Dark wave. Okay, Bjergsen might have to throw out the Chrono Shift as uh, he's going to hold it until the very last second. And in fact, that second doesn't actually come. So uh, second Drake taken by TSM in the meantime, and it is going to be a mountain rift here today as Peanut. Almost gets caught out by the little rock coming up there, and Speaker is going to have to use his flash to get out of the way of the pincer move between Pantheon and Nidalee. And he goes back into... Oh, by Frost. Unbreakable to deny that particular pick as uh, Peanut not quite able to get the smite. So that's good news for TSM. Small victories. They're small, but... Not insignificant as Longxing looks for some cheeky autos there on the Broken Blade, who's going to get slowed down. Tactical Sweep coming on in. But uh, yeah, I mean, the more I commentate these uh, top lane skirmishes, the less I uh, realize, <laughs> yeah, the, the more I realize that it's not all that important. I'm really curious what the grass stacks are on both of these two parties right now, because they have really been hitting each other. Yeah, that's like the true deciding yeah. of this matchup. How many have been denied? Uh, by the Spirit's Refuge. Maybe that's a question we could ask. Um, but even then, it's not very important, ladies and gentlemen. I think elsewhere on the map is going to be the best thing to watch out for, as both of these top laners are going to be aiming for very different things as these games go on. I mean, Shen is a split pusher, but only because he can get to his team at a moment's notice. Uh, Camille's a split pusher because she can murder turrets very, very comfortably. So if you leave her alone, She's going to be very, very scary. And let's see how both TSM and LGD are going to utilize their top side solo laners as the game progresses. A couple of dragons going over to TSM is definitely good news. Mountain Soul in uh, about, you know, theoretically eight minutes time or very close to. The spear going to go a little bit wide there. Aimed out by Peanut as LGD are wanting to take down this outer turret. And like you illustrated before, this is a big deal. Yes. And the problem with it now is that the, the vision play around mid is going to be a little bit more difficult for TSM because normally you would assume, again, well, hold on. Well, hold that thought. This is, uh, this is a lot of people moving towards the top side as long as she realizes it. Spirit's Refuge actually does mitigate a lot of damage, but the double bomb comes down. Broken Blade is going to grab that kill, and it looks like TSM had had enough of this gentleman's agreement on the top side of the map. Yeah, I'm not totally sure why he flashed there, given that Broken Blade had Hextech Ultimatum. So no matter what, he would get locked up regardless and just end up being brought down. But anyways, LGD, at the end of it all, Kramer now. He's going to get the solo turret proximity gold as well as the turret capture for his team there on the bottom side. Spika is starting the second Rift Herald. Ooh, turret also going to go down here, four members. And double lift off to the side for TSM. Broken Blade lying in wait. Seeing whether he can start something off here as the arrow is going to connect towards oh. the backside. Double taunt is huge by Long Xing, though, as Speaker gets himself out of the way with the collateral damage. Meanwhile, Broken Blade dives into the back line. The shockwave used just to try and get rid of the Camille as the curtains have been called. First two shots are going to miss, but the third one's good on to oh. Broken Blade sniped as well as Peanut has to get the heck out of there. Looks for another spear, but the Unbreakable is good. Oh. No! Kramer locking down the 
the second one for himself. And LGD now have TSM cornered underneath their turret. Chrono Shift still on cooldown. And Peanut still stalking his prey. Yerkson just locking up what he can. Spicker didn't quite know where to walk, but is going to be safe in the end. And LGD are going to win a fight and look for their third turret of the game. And what looked like was going to be the start of some good news for TSM just turns around so quickly. And LGD now, they raise yet another turret and they extend their lead to just over 4,000 gold here at 17 minutes. And this is very problematic for TSM because also Mountain Dragons are coming up. So we take a look at this. Stand United in on Pantheon. He goes in on the Biofoss, lines up perfectly for the Shenton. Broken Blade with some really good execution over the ledge. Hextech Ultimatum they didn't quite have the ability to kill Shiei. Everyone from TSM was thinking that they were gonna disengage. Some of the Curtain Call bullets ended up whipping. Peanut tries to go in. Little bit of mechanical footsies going on between these two teams and Kramer with just a beautiful Deadly flourish yet again. And I actually, like, oftentimes you see a lot of value coming out of a zillion when a team is very all in with their team fights, right? When they've got a lot of abilities to land you on top of your opponent, not quite as many to get out as I might have to hold my thought as Broken Blade looking for a bit of a fight here, finds the hook shot, dives what? on top of Peanut but misses the sun. What? And the Chrono Shift is going to get there at the very last, last instance, but it's not going to be enough pullback with the Shockwave and a little bit overly aggressive there by Broken Blade as uh, LS looks uh, very, very confused as to why that just happened. And the thing that's so bizarre about it is that Mountain Dragon is up and they're, they're randomly going for something like that. Now, Shie as well. Yeah, Flash does come through to get himself out of the way of the arrow, but he still takes a lot of damage. Kramer looks for another Deadly Flourish, but misses it. Get six points in my particular country when he's playing football, but however, not going to get anything when it comes to League of Legends. It's Peanut. He's looking for this Mountain Drake, the first dragon for LGD of the game. Mark's going to be there to play goalie, and Shen's pushing out the bottom lane. This is going to go over to LGD very comfortably and uh, head us towards a 5,000 gold lead for the LPL team in their final game at Worlds. And, and this is just very, very unfortunate for TSM because had TSM gotten a mountain instead of the cloud and then LGD just got a cloud dragon, it's not as painful. But now that LGD are the ones that they were fortunately in control of the game at the spawn of the mountain dragons, now they capture it. It's very brutal because they're getting very, very good combat stats for their team. And then in addition to this, I mean, Graves, he's going the Lethality build. Every little point of armor that the enemy gets is that much more painful for you. Yeah. Oh, man. LGD now pushing into TSM's jungle, trying to deny everything that they can. It's a suffocating playstyle that you have the luxury of doing when you're this far ahead. And Peanut looking to try and uh, grab the Bramble back away from Speaker as well. See where the Speaker's going to be able to grab it. And he does. End of the line, Smite going to be able to lock that one down. This Broken Blade finds himself a control ward. LGD know that he's uh, slightly out of position looking for that flank. As uh, Shirley going to pop her head up out of the river and just march towards this inner turret. As TSM look to defend. Looks like they are going to be able to now as the Spear not going to find double lift. Deadly Flourish as well going to be avoided. And Shirley, like we say, is not going to be able to find too much. Smart looking for some poke. Uh, LGD's dash in, dash out comp just makes it so comfortable playing around even the frustrations of uh, the Zillion Chrono Shift, meaning that, you know, if you pick someone out, but then you're just in a team fight, it does mean that things can be difficult as there's the curtains. They have been called. Looking for Biofrost there in the back line. Is, that's a bit of uh, some wanted bullet bending there from Kramer, but not able to lock down the kill onto Biofrost. Things are going very well right now for LGD. TSM are just trying to buy themselves more and more time to continue to scale up. Camille still ways away from getting to the point where she's going to become a very scary menace. Bjergsen doesn't even have a second core item completed yet. Rod of Ages still two minutes left until it hits max stack. Yep. Did manage to get it though, so that's uh, certainly the time gate taken care of for the Zillion. Probably sitting on a bit of gold as well as he's just looking to try and get as much into the coffers as possible before the next team fight. There's our Biofrost, gonna get slowed down, unbreakable. Gonna be reactionary 
Not exactly in time. But now Mark has to flash, actually. A little bit overly aggressive as the uh, arrow sails by majestically. A slight walk south was uh, what LGD used in order to avoid that one. The Baron was poked, but uh, not going to be committed to at this point in time. Well, two minutes until that Mountain Dragon is going to come up. And if LGD gets that one, 12% increased resistances as champions are nearing max level, so the resistances are going to be at their highest for the amplification. It's going to be very obnoxious for TSM, especially because they're all about sustained, persistent damage in their team comp. It's not a pick comp or anything of that nature, so lots of value going to be there for LGD. Yeah, and LGD just have so many poke options as well. Uh, even, you know, the Pantheon having his spear that he can throw out. So Peanut can just fish for opportunities where he sees fit, and then LGD can time when they want to go in. And Longxing always has his ultimate to make sure that everyone stays safe. Uh, back going to come through from Broken Blade. We'll see what he can actually afford. Looks like Ravenous Hydra, Hydra is going to be the next item that he's looking for. He's now in the base. Not quite going to be there just yet. Mr. Caulfield's Warhammer to uh, augment the rest of his build. Looks like he might just be leaving the team out there, heading towards something like a Death Stance. Death yeah. Flourish. Very nice. Snipe. Make sure that Kramer can get all the experience and gold from these minions. Well. I, uh, I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering about the percentage chance of TSM winning this game. Do you have a point? Ooh, yeah, I think, uh, no, I don't. What are we looking at? <laughs> I just, I just want to know, know the situation. How worried should we be? I, I would, on a, like, if, if you ask, you know, it, my life depended on it, I would, I would say less than 5%. Less than 5? Yeah. I'm curious what, what Tim would say on Twitter if you've been following his bots predictions. Oh? Evaluating the game state? No, I haven't seen that. But I have seen this team fight start off as Biofrost taking a bit of damage. Speaker. Oh, not going to get hit by that one, but the curtains come on through. And uh, that is going to be one of them not miss, not hitting. Last bullet going to connect onto Biofrost, but no one on TSM is going to be taken down just yet. This is a fight around this second Mountain Drake. But LGD do have positional advantage on, and TSM not feeling strong enough to fight it. And I do not blame them. And LGD getting this next dragon, I mean, they just draw closer and closer. It is still 10 minutes until the Mountain Soul, which is more than enough time for Zillion to get to third item, Camille to get to third item. But at what cost are they going to end up just giving up everything on the map? They're not in a position to really fight right now, although Kramer... Yeah, unfortunately, Arrow is going to miss there from Dublin. Good Flash comes out to avoid it by Kramer. Is now Broken Blade looking for something. The rest of LGD just going to back away, and their disengage has just been flawless this game. Whenever TSM look like they want to fight, LGD are like, no, I'm sorry. It's just not happening today. They're doing a very good job at controlling basically all the sideways. LGD right now. Oh, speaker. Ooh. Deadly Flourish is going to connect. Spear goes through. Bjergsen blocks it. Nicely done. TSM and still feeling on the ropes, though. We've got a little bit of uh, an ARAM happening here. It is. Hits. Yeah. Both of these teams are in China, but experiencing the the, the NARAM, although we kind of took it in oh, Korea. Oh, we had the KRAM as the well. The KRAM yeah. was uh, yeah. far more prevalent. I do definitely want to shout out uh, the LCS. Weren't necessarily ARAMing as much as we were <laughs> <laughs> in seasons past. But uh, in this game, that was, uh, that was a lot of time spent in mid. So yeah. Bit of a revisit to the NARAM. And it looks like all the utility items are there on the side of LGD. They are fully equipped battle. for a team fight, if it would end up happening. Although they're so quite close to completed core items. If you just look at their inventory right now, it would be a little bit bizarre if they're really going to insist on a fight. Arrow connects onto the shed, not exactly. Oh! Three man shockwave in the back line! Deadly Flourish locks down one, and TSM, they are running for the hill. Speaker battling here against Mark, and not exactly winning out here. Jungle versus support as TSM limp away from Shie's orb. 
happen just now. Uh, TSM, they're forced to go on the full retreat. Double lift, no summoner spells. And now LGD, they have total control with what they want to do. They're actually not going to start the Baron. And this is what I was mentioning in that Jin, so close to his completed item. You have Shie and Nidalee very close as well. I think that Longxing, I, I, I don't know if he's going for the Warmogs or if he's just going to go for the Knight's Vow and go down the supportive route. Yep. So we'll see what happens there. There's the third item completed for the Jin. Oh, Shie is so close to Zanya's as well. This is uh, three items coming through from uh, two of the most notable three item champions in Orianna and the Jin. Jin with uh, these particular ones collected. Very similar to a lot of our crit AD carries, but he's no exception, absolutely. As Grand Skyfall comes through, that is going to be the Stand United in compa like compared with it as that is going to be the Chrono Ship having to be used very, very early in this fight onto Bjergsen himself. He goes Broken Blade, they're looking for Mark, he's very low, and that is going to be the Hexac Ultimatum that locks down the Pantheon. Now Long Xing going to have to taunt himself out of there as Bifrost does follow willingly, and now Broken Blade going to go into his stopwatch. But Long Xing, he doesn't really care, he's got himself the Spirit's Refuge, keeps him alive for so long as now Speaker comes in, but Collateral Damage not going to be able to do enough to take down any one more, and only Mark is going to fall after that one. The and Jin definitely sounds scary, which <laughs> it's yes. walking away. Now, Kramer was not there, basically, during the fight when it was at its peak moment. So, a little bit overzealous was LGD. Double if no summoners, yeah. no Enchanted Crystal Arrow. All four bullets are going to land. Okay. Deadly Flourish as well. Okay, Kramer, chill out, mate. We get it. You can hit every skill shot. Well played. Double lift is going to survive, however. And uh, it does mean that he has to go for a reset here. In 50 seconds now on the Mountain Drake, he should be able to get back as Bjergsen speeds himself up. Super Soaker comes in and does get the flash out of Peanut, who will have another pounce available if another bomb does come down. But that is a very valuable flash. To come out from Bjergsen, who's coming alive now on this Zillion. We'll see if he can manage to keep TSM alive inside of this game, because all the pressure is on him. Now Speaker going to get tagged by the Spear. LGD now having to deal with a mid lane minion wave. It's going to give TSM some priority around this Mountain Drake that's going to be spawning in 12 seconds time. More experience, level 15 now given over to Speaker. Spina going to be in an uh, experience deficit thanks to the Zillion. Good news. Longxing very tanky right now. Looks like it might be a Spirit Massage potentially coming in next. But we'll have to see exactly what that item is going to be. Mark looks for the stun. Does get it down there, but stand beside me. Going to be in for Biofrost. Oh! That is going to be the Dragon taken by Double Lift of all people. TSM did have control of the pit. Peanut goes for the smite. Doesn't quite find it. In fact, this world has not really been the greatest for Peanut's ability to smite. And this is definitely scary because the gold graph, I mean, you take a look at it on our screen, a it is stagnating very hard. And this is a TSM Wonderland when things of this nature are happening. Speak up, does not have smite. I think they're aware of that. Well, he's still going to try and get in there, but collateral damage not going to be enough, and Peanut is going to be able to secure the Baron. Broken Blade still trying to dive in, doesn't get the stun, but does find oh, Hextech Ultimate. No. Two-man Shockwave onto some very high-priority members as the Chrono Shift is out already, and now the Curtain Call comes in. Hook shot out from Broken Blade, looking to try and escape this one as the final bullet barely too short there onto Biofrost. DSM do intelligently move over and will be able to take down this outer turret in the mid lane. And now they're looking for a fight. Arrow comes in, they're looking for Longxing first as they're fighting this one front to back. But LGD are going to survive, not taking very much damage. TSM not going to bite off more than they can chew. And that's just LGD. I mean, there was a fight in there somewhere, but the result is barren for LGD. Yeah. And so they do manage to extend their gold a little bit. So we'll see how this Red Bull Baron power play is going to turn out for them in the end. But Bjergsen, he's almost level 16. Camille, almost likewise, going to be level 16 as well. And 
We're reaching the point where Oriana, she's going down the utility item route. And so because she picked up the Morello and then the Zanyas, she's lacking a lot of just raw power inside of her inventory. Jen, all of his items are now just becoming utility. It seems like he's going every which way, picks up the Kindle Gem, doesn't get the Knight's Vow. So he's just sitting on 200 HP and some CDR. Maybe yeah. now he's going Locket of the Iron Solari. Nidalee picks up the Void Stab. But it's really coming down to Jin. Even Pantheon, he's been stuck on the same items for a very long time. TSM are just consistently getting stronger. Great, almost has Mortal Reminder. And uh, Double If now has his three items completed as well. Cheeky extra crit cloak also. As Peanut, gonna get tagged, but Deadly Flourish comes out onto Biofrost as well. Unbreakable is now on cooldown, which is important as Double If takes half of his health bar from one spear. I guess that's why you build a Void, a void Star third on the Nidalee. <laughs> that did a heck of a lot of damage. In the meantime, Broken Blade's taking down an inner turret in the mid lane, though. As Longxing does come back and looks to try and stop that one. LGD continuing the siege. And Kramer finding another curtain call opportunity. Biofrost going to be there with the Unbreakable. So we get to listen to the music for a little while longer. Waits out the Unbreakable there, but doesn't find the last bullet. They will be able to find the turret regardless. And uh, this is just going to be LGD brute forcing through the bottom lane. Going to be able to take that inhibitor without any response by TSM. And now the, TS the, the inhibitor going down isn't necessarily the end of the world if you are a TSM fan. This provides basically a lane that's now going to funnel them in gold. The only way that this inhibitor comes back to bite them, given that they have a Camille who has teleport available, is if they somehow take a catastrophic team fight and die and LGD can end through it. Yeah. But realistically, this should just be a golden and experience funnel. Wow. Okay. Brownie's comment. Picking, yeah, picking the gap. Absolutely, that one is going to drift majestically around the globe that is Rune Terra, as I recently learned. Yeah. I'm glad you've been uh, keeping up. Thank you, thank you. Bye, On your reading. Yeah, well, I mean, after after our first day of yeah. the world, I mean, you blew my mind with that information. That means I'm always aware that there could be enchanted crystal arrows coming from any which way, considering True. how many have been fired off the side of the map. I just liked the idea that it was flat, you know, heading off into nothingness, and then I'd never have to worry about them again. It's Broken Blade just dealing with super minions, certainly equipped to do so, yep. as is GA. So basically double GA. This Chrono Shift is going to be there for Bjergsen if they are going to team fight around the Camille. It's a lot of extra lives. And here's one of the other things about that inhibitor being down. It's in close proximity to the major neutral that is the Mountain Drake that's coming up. And this is also Soul Point. So... Doesn't look like TSM maybe are that interested. Oh, no, I think they are. Bjergsen is speeding his way down here. They got to be really careful, though. They don't have... Oh, whoa, whoa. okay. Well, that's balanced. And <laughs> LGD trying to poke them out right now with Italy. Longqing coming over from the left-hand side. He has a natural given flank. No teleport needed for this one. Yeah, Broken Blade thought that he was in position for a flank as well, but it has... Ooh. Starting to think like uh, LGD uh, figured that one out. Deadly Flourish is somehow going to connect. Hit, hitbox question mark, because that is going to be the Hexec ultimatum. Oh! This GA might be going down. Good Arrow is going to connect, but Kramer going to flash on over. He's going to join the Camille, try and take her down first in this fight, but the Chrono Shift is going to get in there. This Bjergsen's going to help him out. He's still alive in this fight, as Mark may not be so lucky. Collateral damage ties him up there. This Bjergsen's so close to death, but he's going to keep himself alive. Now Longshank looking for double lift and will find him. Broken Blade trying to hookshot his way out, but may not be able to get there. Oh, the spear can. will connect. Speaker, can they get this 2v2 is the question. As there's the stun, smoke screen. Trying to get the Nidalee out of there. Longshank is very, very tanky. Spirit's Refuge is busted in this instance. And uh, Broken Blade is eventually going to have the precision and the protocol to be able oh. to grab the Shen. Oh. As uh, Peter oh. still looking because... for it. And this is the oh. cutest little game of cat and mouse, or cat and graves, I guess. The smoke screen going to deny Peanut one more time. Collateral damage thrown down there. In the meantime, LGD, by the way, are winning the game. But this is fun. This part this... towards the bottom side of the map. This is what we want to see. As they are going to find Peanut, and that spear is not going to connect. The kitty cat lady just going to disappear.
And Peanut now is going to turn his attention. The it was yeah. the other way around. I'm getting all, uh, all thrown out of whack because this game is just insane. What a chaotic series of events. That's going to be the third dragon going over. And <laughs> everyone has a lot of resistances right now that are getting some nice <laughs> amplification. So it's very mountainous yeah. uh, over LGD's way. Not entirely sure what a gaming house is, but it might be in the Alps somewhere in China. What a chaotic fight. Now, I, I feel like the game is still now neck and neck, though. Inhibitor in bottom lane, because of that, that Nexus turret did almost end up falling in the base. But TSM were able to hang on to it. And now it looks like everyone's just cleaning up the waves right now. They don't want to lose any team fight and then lose the game. But hold on, we got a teleport. Yeah, we got the Hail Mary to come through from TSM. They're looking for Shie, who's now alone yeah. in an alcove. He does have Shockwave. He finds it on absolutely no one. And TSM will be able to lock down the Orianna. If that's not a panic Shockwave, then I've never seen one in my life. Oh, 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 no. No, 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 no. Are we looking no, for the back door? Is it happening? Are oh, we Jin in Pantheon. Are we going to trade Baron for Nexus? That has never been a good one. Oh, no. As LGD trying to keep them here. Oh, no. Yeah, Curtain Gore going to come in. And yes, TSM, you did manage oh. to get a Baron. But can you get out of here is the question. Empowered recalls are going to come through. But there are no, no, no. Oh. Left remaining. One comes back. There are four people here. Can Longxing do it? Is the question. Is Peanut's going to go golden? A few more auto attacks. And this oh. one's going to go down. Stage United keeps Peanut alive. And LGD do it. They trade Nexus for the Baron. And that's going to get them the victory. This game came down to pride. But damn, it was exciting. I am, I, I, <laughs> I am blown away at the ending Atlas. It looked like TSM were going to actually stabilize, get the Baron, have that persist into the mountain hole, and probably win the game. Their team comp was at the stage where it was vastly superior in a straight up 5v5. Yeah, that wasn't exactly the Red Bull Baron power play that you were looking for on TSM's side, but I do understand why they're going for it, right? Because sometimes you get that point of desperation where you just need to make a call and commit to it. And Baron Empowered Recalls are a thing. They did manage to get four people back there, but unfortunately, the Shen, the Spirit's Refuge, the denial of all of that damage and Peanut also being there with a Lich Bane meant that the Nexus just did not stand for long enough. No, and uh, what, a, what a heartbreaking loss. It really did look like they were going to be able to clutch that one out. But LGD, even Peanut, at, at the very end of it, didn't look super relieved. Like, the game was a little bit sloppy, yeah, pretty right. much, given everything that was unfolding. But they managed to clutch it out in the end. And I, what, what a send-off. Yeah, for both actually, these two teams. It was uh, it was very exciting on LGD's side. We know that they're an exciting team. We've been watching them since uh, since play-ins here on the world stage, and we know what they're capable of. It's the consistency that hasn't really worked out. Unfortunately, it means a 0-6 for TSM in this group. It was going to be a really difficult group for them, just yeah. in general. I mean, I think a lot of people thought that they might be bottom of this group after you know everything shook out. Uh, as the the groups the group draw came in, but it's never going to feel good uh, to be a first seed uh, in a group like this and uh, come out zero six. No, and I mean, if you're TSM, this is like you're mentioning. It was a very hard group. Fnatic, yeah. Genji, LGD, all of those teams are very strong. A lot of people slated this as the group of death, and so TSM had two very close games. So they had that going for them. They even. I think in a different world, probably win this one. Yeah. I mean, I actually thought that you were talking about how close this game yeah. theoretically was, right? Even when it was a 7,000 gold lead, there was a chance that TSM could turn it around, given their, uh, given their composition yeah. just wasn't quite enough. And in the end, it was a very, very exciting finish. But, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we return, we've got the LCK's Genji returning to the stage opposite the LEC's Fnatic, and you do not want to miss it. Fnatic are looking so strong at this point in time. Stick around.
everyone to the State Farm Analyst Zone where we are gearing up for the fight for first as Gen G and Fnatic face off in the last game of Group C. It's very simple. Whoever wins here gets the first seed going into the knockout stage. Now, most of the time, I try and take off my EU hat as a host. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm remembering how traumatized I am from two days ago when G2 had two chances to lock first and lost. So, you know, it's a bit stressful for us, but um, we're still going to try and keep it as balanced as possible because we have two very strong teams going up against each other. Both teams are 2-0 and zero today, and they are two of the strongest teams in the group, clearly. I think starting with Gen G, like their story of today has been kind of rocky. Their mm -hmm. games were very close. They went into like the deep ends. The game against TSM happened over Nash or Steel because Senna sniped it. Pew. And then of course the game against LGD was very sloppy. While on the other hand, Fnatic have looked so damn good in their victories. Pretty clean and they seem to be leveling up. Fnatic week two seems to be honest and true. And honestly, the camaraderie that we're seeing from Fnatic is astounding. This is a team that's always, uh, you know, felt like they've never quite Everyone on the team has played on the same page, but that seems to be a different story today. Everyone seems to be playing together. Everyone seems to be willing to go in at the same time. And frankly, when you see Reckless flash over a wall just so he can chase in a tower, we'll call that one the Han Sama from the LEC regular <laughs> season, you know it's, it's good things coming for Fnatic. Let's talk a bit more about this bot lane matchup. It is iconic on both sides. Ruler, um, who said, well, I won this world championship before, but I've also gotten eliminated early. He's definitely not getting eliminated Sorry, man. today. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> But everything but getting first seed when you come from the LCK is also a step down. And also, last week, he was not feeling too well. We, of course, had that game versus Fnatic that just went completely haywire. This man, Ruler, has a mission up versus Reckless. For sure. I th still think he has a lot more to offer than he has shown so far in the group stage. I think Ruler came into the tournament for many as the best AD carry uh, coming into the whole thing and I was inclined to agree. So far, I think it hasn't been up at that performance because best hit carry in the tournament is kind of a very, very big statement to make. Mm -hmm. I think in this game, this is time for him to show up against Reckless. Well, let me recontextualize that then. It is time for him to show up versus Reckless, but you called him a god earlier today. Uh, Hillisang, the support for Fnatic. Actually, I put that word in your mouth. You just said it was good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not throwing you under the bus. Any case, you were throwing a lot of praise the way of Hillisang in this bot lane, who did make the difference also in most of these games. How important is that going to be? I mean, I think Hillisang is massive in this game, and I think that last time we kind of got a false impression of what this bot lane matchup would look like yes. because of some very greedy decisions yeah. coming in from, from life. life. And this I think silly. Life, <laughs> yeah, this is different. up silly. The thing that you should take away from that, though, that's a positive if you haven't watched the LCK, is that Life is a very creative support, similar to Hillisang in that regard, but also similar is that he is a big risk taker. So I think that this is an opportunity for the Gen.G bottom lane to reset, to come in with a cleaner game plan. And I think it's going to look very different than what you're seeing on your screen now, which was the absolute stomp the first time these teams played. Kind of what worries me is Genji's uh, identity that they've chosen to kind of take shape in uh, coming into this day. There's a lot of top center focus and I think you know with the Senna pick Senna super strong in the current meta but I think uh, this is a champion that maybe you need to step away from and make sure that you can play strong side bottom side because Genji haven't shown that yet yeah we know that they can carry so hard through that bottom lane from mid to bot is what you say I said at the top of the day Yamato but I think when we look at kind of how the games have gone Genji indeed a top focused game for Rascal versus LGD and then Fnatic with honestly also a top lane that's been popping off today in Blue Whipple, and of course a self-made. We cannot have a segment without mentioning him. The man is on fire. It seems like the meta is sculpted for him specifically. How can you disrupt him if you're Gen G? I mean, getting him on the hacker room again is an excellent start because I think we also got a bad read on that pick in the previous game. Fnatic had to do a lot to set that pick up, pick up for success, so don't assume that that's going to be all successful. I think this game is going to be wildly different from the ones that we saw previous in the yeah. day. There is a big opportunity for Webbo to come in top lane and to dominate, but more likely than not, I think we'll probably just see of a trade of picks like the Renekton and the Volibear. So for me, Genji have one choice, and it's do you want Clid to play something like the Gragas and offer a more early game kind of pressure-oriented jungle to maybe break up some of these lane phase matchups or do you want to try to match the farming aspect because 
I think it's a difficult task to do. Yeah, and also we have to keep in mind that this time around Genji is on the blue side. Yes. And there's a lot of crossover in what the champion pools are. BDD loves his Oriana too, the jungle champions too. Maybe you see a couple of bands and then boom, a first big graves and all of a sudden maybe uh, the same champion pools won't show up. What is going to happen with Nemesis when Oriana and of course the Lucian is out? There are some questions that might be answered here in the mm -hmm. next match. Yes, indeed. And I'd love to say, well, the momentum is surely in Fnatic's favor, but that's not how it works at Worlds. You have to win every single game necessary that is right in front of you. And right now, it is a Titans of Gen G. The first place in Group C is on the line. We'll see how it goes right after this. Ooh, exciting. Ooh. Both teams have a lot of weight in this matchup, and both definitely want to pick up this win today. It's going to be a good one. I think third up. Group C is definitely the most exciting group because of the possibility for upsets. Comes in from the Ornus, he tries to dive onto the back line. Call of the Forge God comes out, there's the quickness. Call of the Forge God goes the wrong way, but the Dawning Shadow keeps Quipper alive. And there's the knock-up, and there's a double, and there's one more. Ruler falls, BDD shuffles in, but the Emperor can do nothing. In a game that has been back and forth, Fnatic find the mistake from Genji. It ended up being a very close game, but that was a lot of fun. I can't wait, we still got one more to go, man.